Okay, moving on to the next team in the Pac-12 that we will be going over today. That will be Sean Miller and his Arizona Wildcats, who I have right now projected to finish in eighth place in this Pac-12. And I feel like with Arizona, before I start talking about anything having to do with their roster, to me, it is still an unknown if Sean Miller is going to be this team's head coach for the near future. When I record this podcast, I'm going to be assuming that he will be the coach for their season. And to be honest, all the off court, off the court stuff, who knows? I really am not a thousand percent sure what the future holds for Sean Miller as the head coach of the Arizona Wildcats. But going back to the way this roster looks right now, I think Arizona has a lot of boomer bust potential. I could see a scenario where Arizona could be a top 25 team. I have seen much crazier things happen. But at the same time, I could also see a scenario where this Arizona team is very similar to the Arizona team two years ago that was probably the worst Arizona team I've ever seen. It was the year after they lost DeAndre Ayton and Alonzo Trier, and they were rolling out like Justin Coleman and Chase Jeter as starters, and clearly that team just was not good for Arizona standards. And I feel like when you look at this team and the way Sean Miller has built his roster, I'm very curious to see just what the rotation is to start because the first thing that comes to mind is all of these international freshmen that Sean Miller decided to bring in. A lot of people have been joking around like, oh, Sean Miller can't secure the bag uh, here in the United States anymore, so why not go after all of the really good international kids? And I feel like the first question that comes to mind for me with this Arizona team is, okay, in an offseason like we've never seen before, are these freshmen who are all international going to be able to come in and contribute right away? The first one that comes to mind is Azulis Tabellis right now. Most people project him to be the starting power forward for this Arizona team. I've seen a little bit of him. I like his game. I like the style of play that he uses. And he also has a younger brother, Pat Villas Tabellis, who is also joining the fold. But Azulis is the one to watch. ESPN ranked him as the top European recruit in the 2020 recruiting cycle, which is very good and a compliment to Arizona and how they find their talent. And I feel like most people do compare him to the former Michigan star, Iggy Brasdakis. And I feel like if Arizona could get anywhere close to the production that he that, that, that Michigan got from Iggy, then that ultimately could be something that puts these Arizona Wildcats over the top. The other good international player they bring in is Kirk Chrysler, who I think by season's end, once he's a little more familiar with Sean Miller and everything he likes to do, could be the starting point guard for this Arizona team. I've seen his tape. He's very, very talented. But I think when you look at this Arizona team, the core is going to be built around a couple guys. And the first thing that scares me is that Arizona does not return a lot from last year's squad. And I'll make the argument, I'm willing to make it, that last year, Arizona was one of the five most disappointing teams in the country. And I feel like not a lot of people are going to talk about it because of the pandemic. And it's not like they were bad. Odds are Arizona would have been in the NCAA tournament and like a seven or eight seed. But I just feel like even though on paper that doesn't look awful, for a school like Arizona, who has the fan base they do and the resources they do and the expectations that they do, I feel like last year was a disappointment for Arizona. And they just lost a bunch of games that, to be honest, I didn't expect them to lose. I remember the one that comes to mind is late last season. They had a home game against Washington and Keep in mind, that's a Washington team that lost like a million Pac-12 games in a row, and still, ultimately, Arizona was not able to beat them at home. That was the last game of the season for these Arizona Wildcats, and this Arizona team loses a lot, and the first one that comes to mind is Nico Mannion, one and done. He was a former top 10 recruit, and to be honest, I think he was a little soft when he was playing for Arizona. I expected him to be a little more aggressive, a little more in your face. He had a lot of hype coming in uh, to his freshman year at Arizona, and he was all right. It's not like he was bad, but I expected him to be bigger in the bigger moments. They also lose Josh Green and Zeke Naji. To be honest, I was never a huge Josh Green fan. He is all hype to me, just a bouncy athletic forward that is not very skilled in the game of basketball at all. But I do think the one guy Arizona will really miss is Zeke Naji. And 
when you looked at the recruiting class that Sean Miller was able to bring in last year, it was that three-headed monster full of three run and three one and duns. And Najee was the guy that most Arizona fans didn't necessarily expect to go one and done. They kind of expected him, hopefully, to stay around for a couple of years and really develop and hopefully by his junior or senior year be one of the best players in the Pac-12. But unfortunately, he goes one and done. Arizona loses him. And they also lose two, uh, three, excuse me, grad transfers that have came in before, including Max Hazard, Dylan Smith, and Stone Gettings. I think all three of those losses are pretty significant for Arizona. But then this year, they bring in some more transfers, including uh, grad transfer Terrell Brown from Seattle. I have him as one of the starting guards in Arizona's backcourt. They also bring in two sit-out guys, James Akinjo from Georgetown. He played half of the season last year for the Hoyas, averaged 13.4 points per game, three rebounds per game, 4.4 assists per game. And I do think that this is going to be a real opportunity for James Akinjo to succeed here. I feel like something happened at Georgetown that I just don't know that I don't know, something just went wrong with Akinjo and McClung in year seven. I feel like that Georgetown team had plenty of talent last year, and then all of a sudden, Akinjo and Josh LeBlanc decided to leave, and Georgetown was actually better once those two guys really decided to go. So I feel like with James Akinjo, this year is big because... There are some fans around college basketball that have the reputation of Akinjo as a guy that can't win. You remember that Jim Beheim made those comments about him last year after Georgetown and Syracuse played, and I feel like that, I don't want to say it's a concern, but I'm curious to see how James Akinjo and Arizona does while he's the best player on their team, in my opinion. They also bring in Jordan Brown, the 6'11 redshirt sophomore who played a little bit on the Nevada team that won the Mountain West two years ago. And I feel like if you're buying stock in Arizona this year, Jordan Brown is going to be one of the guys you're really buying stock in. He only averaged three and two at Nevada, but this kid is a former McDonald's All-American. We all know Eric Musselman and what he likes to do with his rotations. He only likes to play five, six, seven, eight guys. And unfortunately, while at Nevada, Trey Porter and Trey Sean Terman jumped Jordan Brown in that rotation. The other kid Arizona brings in is Daylon Terry, the 6'6 freshman, who I think could have a big impact on this year's Arizona squad. And ultimately, I my worry for Arizona is I just think there are way too many different puzzle pieces that are going to have to be put together in place for this team to win. Kind of similar to Oregon, to be honest. And Sean Miller is a really good recruiter. I don't think he's a bad coach, but he's not a coach that puts you up and over the top to win. I feel like there are going to be plenty of games where he just gets out coached in the X's and O's department. And ultimately, when you combine that and all of the different moving pieces on this Arizona team, I think they have the talent to make the NCAA tournament, but I'm not going to predict it because I can't trust Sean Miller and his uh, roster right now the way it's constructed. I think they have potential to be really good. Jamaro Baker, Ira Lee, and Christian Coloco are three guys that return as well, but I don't really see any roles for this Arizona team, and I feel like in order for them to succeed, that's ultimately what they're going to have to figure out.